The highest order in the land of Egypt today can't agree on the biggest questions in existence. Who were the ancient Egyptians and who exactly are responsible for the undertaking at Giza? The highest officials today are in constant dispute about the history of the ancient land and the fact remains that no one at all has these answers. Big questions deserve big answers, not big lies. Renowned is a word reserved for those of us who have shed light on the events of the past. The authorities in Egypt have fallen short of such a classification, and in their failure to understand the existence of the ancient things, it has seen some of these public figures reduced to guesswork at best, as the long-standing mysteries of ancient Egypt are yet to reveal their secrets to anyone. Never mind the world, it's not hard to understand that a person's life work can be frustrating if no clear conclusion can be drawn. But it is essential for the rest of us to not fall victim to this frustratingly long process where little sense is made and far-reaching conclusions are drawn in a short-sighted effort to gain credit for the things that remain unknown. The question of who built the pyramids, what they are, and how long they have been in existence are the most perplexing questions humanity have been faced with. These are things of the unknown, but it seems that the people in charge of the antiquities in Egypt today would have us think that they are in fact experts on the matter. This is until we realize that their experts are not even agreeing with each other on the matter. And that is a good thing because it shows that there is no clear-cut answer to be offered. That means the process of discovery can uncover these answers from the debris and ruins that are reduced to scrutiny in modern times. This war of words is being waged in Egypt between prominent public figures in the form of much-loved Zahi Hawass and Egypt's former Grand Mufti Ali Goma. The row broke out following Golma's comments about who built the pyramids. He said that Prophet Idris was probably the first to start construction of the famed structure and that the Sphinx represents Prophet Idris. Golma, who, as the Grand Mufti, issued legal opinions interpreting Islamic law and is a member of Egypt's top scholastic authority, told a TV show, Egypt the Land of Prophets, that there are many probabilities discussed by scholars that Prophet Idris was the first to start building the pyramids and that he taught the science of mummification and that the face of the Sphinx is Idris's face. Following the show's broadcast, Hawass issued a statement refuting Golma's claim in which he exclaimed, There is no need for a religious cleric to talk about archaeology, especially considering he gave incorrect information that is totally irrelevant to archaeology. According to Hawass, some time ago it was mentioned in the famous program Science and Faith, and they gave the same incorrect information, which is a repetition of what Arab travelers said when they came to Egypt in the 19th century. He called on Goma to prove the prophet Idris built the pyramids or that he bore any likeness to the Sphinx before he went on to say that Firstly, we have full evidence that King Djoser built the first pyramid and that the genius Imhotep changed the construction material from mud bricks to stones. We have the oldest papyri found up till now where the chief of workers Meir talks about Khufu's pyramid, saying that the area around the pyramid was known as Ankh Khufu, meaning Khufu lives, and that Khufu lived in a palace at the pyramids. As for the Sphinx, it does not date back to the pre-Khufu and Khafra era as Goma said. This is a huge mistake because all the scientific evidence proves that the Sphinx dates back to the King Khafra era. It was engraved to show the king in the form of Horus. The ancient Egyptians linked the king's strength and the lion's. The Sphinx has the body of a lion and a human head. As for mummification, Hawass said, Prophet Idris did not teach mummification because Egyptians learned mummification in stages, beginning with the first dynasty, when they used to dry the corpse while adding some substances on the legs. Later, the process improved and they started making masks during the fourth dynasty. Mummification reached its peak only during the 18th dynasty. 
Goma incredibly replied to Hawass, and the war of words between these two figures has ensued as he replied with the following. My old friend Dr. Zahi Hawass did not see the program, but rather dependent on what the media reported. Had he seen the program, he would have known that we differentiate between scientific stories and folk stories. He would also have known that it is a show that highlights how Egyptians belong to their country and how much they love it. Moreover, the show underlines Egypt's historical location, which many people might not pay attention to. Historical researcher Mahmoud Hassan claims that Prophet Idris as the Sphinx are mentioned in many prominent history books, the latest of which is The Shining Stars, issued during the Mamluk era in Egypt. The mystery remains and the conflict of words and understanding show signs of slipping into a frustrating process with no clear conclusions, but we must continue to search for the answers to the past, no matter how many dead ends they may lead to. These two figures are at loggerheads over the process of discovering, and that shows a lack of understanding and a want to include new findings in a preconceived narrative that is being laid out even before the discovery can take place. But what do you think about these strange little war of words between the big egos of Egypt not so renowned researchers, comments below, and as always, guys, thank you for watching.